Okay. I'm going to start. Huh? I'm going to start. Okay. You ready? I am. Are you? Okay. Yes. All right. So, these video logs are called Ingmar Norcott and the Supreme Experience. This is me, obviously. Um, so, what do we mean by Supreme Experience? Please, let's recall that um, the last time that we got together on this video, or I made a video, we were reading um, Thoreau's Cape Cod. Um, and we began speaking about likeness as an idea. So I'm asking, what is the supreme experience? And I describe the idea of likeness as the supreme originating principle of becoming and the cosmos. <clears throat> now what that means of course is that take an idea of God. He has an idea in his mind. That idea is a model and in the process of creation, the model of creation, he reflects upon that idea and he produces, this is from Plato's Timaeus, produces the cosmos, which is the order of the universe. And this cosmos is a copy of this idea. The idea is the model, the idea is himself. So, as you can see in this model, we have a complete tale of how properties like beautiful, good, intelligent, uh, beneficent, good bestowing, comes to be in the universal order itself, right? Now, what got us into this idea was an analogy of a corpse to a shipwreck. Uh, with no inhabitants. See this word analogy, analogos, a logos that takes us up. <clears throat> so, right in the universe, we can study things. This comes from a Pierre Grimes lecture. This is my teacher. It's part of who I am is a student of this man who wrote this book called Is It All Relative, which has a very interesting section on analogy, called The Study of Analogy in the Back. Things and their relations. Those are the two things that you can study in the universe, which I think is a very interesting statement, right? In, in as much as I can encompass it, the study of all things, as it were, in two categories. Right, um, so just to read from, uh, there's two significant analogies from Cape Cod. Right? Um, the first one is, Cape Cod is the bared and bended arm of Massachusetts. The shoulder is at Buzzards Bay. All right, see, so Cape Cod is, the bare, the bended arm. No, it is. It's not an arm, right? So the use of analogy here is called metaphor, right? When you want to use, uh, when you want to generate a simile. Right. So, for example, are we good with this? You got a good shot of all this. Mm -hmm. Let's see this. <clears throat> I 
I'm a little fidgety today. Okay. Um, so here's the basic four terminology. A is to B, as C is to D. Right? Uh, with analogies, I can use numbers. The types of analogies use numbers, symbols. These are symbols uh, and ideas. Two is to four, and eight is to twelve. Excuse me. Eight is to sixteen. Uh, uh, that's a four-term proportion. Uh, it can be expressed like this, obviously. Okay, or I can use ideas like the shepherd is to his sheep. Subject. Four terminology. Right? This is a relationship or ratio. This is a relationship. Uh, the relationship between the two ratios is a relationship. Right? Um, <clears throat> really? And the property is communicated. Mm -hmm. from one ratio to the next is called likeness. Shepherd is to sheep is more known. Rulers to subjects is less known. So analogy, the study of analogy is studying the more known in order to gain insight into the less known. <clears throat> So, oh right, 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 so let's still stick with shepherd and ruler. To generate a metaphor or simile, I take the first terms in both ratios and bring them together. So a shepherd, and I use to make similes like or as, and to make metaphors, I use is. So let's metaphors. All right, so um, a shepherd is a ruler. Yes. No, he's not. This is a lie. But if I say of sheep, then it makes more sense. But a shepherd is not a ruler in the sense of being a king or a politician or a magistrate. This is a lie. But if I say a shepherd is like a ruler, <laughs> then I've got a simile. And I don't have a lie. Oh, I see. Right. <clears throat> simile. So when this guy says in Cape Cod, Thoreau, that Cape Cod is the bared and bended arm of Massachusetts, he's identifying uh, a body part of the human with geography, right? And therefore, how does that relate to the supreme experience, right? When you can start thinking of the organs of the universe or things of the universe like geography, land masses, particular locales in terms of their relationship, with parts of the human body, now you're literally anthropomorphizing, anthropomorphizing, however you want to say that, the universe. Um, <clears throat> and that is to say you're finding meaning by identifying a human body uh, with various aspects of Cape Cod. It very, would be very interesting to do that. We're not going to do that. But this is the first use or a most significant use of analogy I've found in this work. Um, <clears throat> But the one that got me off into talking about uh, the demi-ergos and likeness being the supreme originating principle of becoming and the cosmos is this one. And I also want to note how the divine likeness in man can be invoked by his extensive use of this analogy, which we only get right at the end, <coughs> in terms of his description. Okay, now the idea is, as I said from before, that this guy is particular... Uh, approach to the description of daily affairs 
should show the nobility of his spirits or his magnificence in appreciating that the divine is in the smallest of things, that there has to be a peculiar humility of spirit in the precise and faithful description of uh, what he's... See, now, when, we say, when I say precise, I don't mean completely accurate, because uh, his ability to... Uh, come across as a poet concerning the things that he's describing as part and parcel of doing due honor and faithfully uh, uh, addressing, incorporating, trans uh, transmutating uh, his experience into uh, something that we find to be of lasting significance, uh, bringing an immortal fame to Thoreau as a writer. Right? Um, and so too with this description. <clears throat> 